Hello, and welcome to Leon's Lock Pad, and welcome to Sunday. We're going to do part two of how to pick a lock. Uh, I hope everybody's doing well. It's one of those fantastic, miserable Manchester days where it's just constantly raining. Um, today we're going to have a go at doing a uh, tea pin, a mushroom pin. And hopefully this will work. I've got myself a little brass blank, and we're going to turn this into a into a drunken spool. Um, we've got like I think it's about six days left on the vice versa challenge. I might prolong it for another week because we've got got I've got like six videos. But come on, get some more videos done. And no one's done one for the lever lock. All you've got to do, no gutting with the lever lock. It's just do just pick it with the opposite hand. That's all you've got to do. Got an air on there for some reason. Oh no, it's glue. Um, yeah, get it done. Get yourself involved and uh, have a chance of winning some fabulous prizes. So let's have a go. What we're going to do. So we are. We've got a T pin. Now with T pins, don't really get them often in um, stock locks. It's more of a challenge lock thing, but you could come across them. Um, now. The reason it's this way and not facing the other way around is because you don't want this part inside the spring because it's not doing its job more than if it's doing it this way, this is doing its job and I'll show you what I mean. So give, give ourselves a little bit of tension and as you can see, it's at just this part of it at the moment where it's just above the shear line is acting like a, a standard driver you wouldn't know what was in here but like I say once you give it a little twitch you're gonna get that fault set and you know gives you a nice fault set you're thinking yes I'm close um, but like I say when you push down you're gonna you're gonna get that counter and you're gonna you're not careful you're gonna overset your core and all your pins are gonna drop now this one, you've got to really keep that tension as you push that driver down. And as you push it down, it's going to give you even more of a fault set. And then eventually, it should go and you'll get that nice click. Now a lot of these with, um, I'll mention this anyway, um, if you're starting to pick challenge lock. So you've got your very first challenge lock and maybe someone's told you. If someone's mentioned to you, use a shim, more than likely it's because of a T-pin. Because what a T-pin will do is... Um, if you don't use your shim on the back of your core, I've got a spare core here actually, on the back of your core, besides you have these gaps here, you don't want it falling in, you have these ones as well, and that T-pin is going to drop straight inside there and lock your core up, and that's it, you ain't getting this core out, your lock's done for. So always remember, if someone ever says use a shim, that's the, that, for me that is a key word of, T pins or something very similar to that. Um, right, let's go for the uh, let's go for the mushroom spool. I saw the uh, the last video did very well. Seems quite a lot of people enjoyed that, which I can say a big thank you for your support. Got a couple of people who disliked it, which, to be honest, was funny. I know dislikes don't really bother me because activity is activity, no matter what. If it's good or bad, it's still good for your channel. But I couldn't understand if it was a challenge lock or some people just don't like them anymore or if it was uh, something really dull. But when you're actually doing a tutorial to help other people, you'd think you'd find it interesting. Unless you're one of those who thinks you're a god at picking and you just don't need any type of help and you know you can just do uh, whatever you want. You're just that skilled. Maybe there is people out there like that. Right, so let's just replace the spring. This is a stiffer spring. I have different springs for uh, different jobs on here. A slightly weaker spring. All right, so let's put the core in. We are in. We have our mushroom spool in. You can, these can go either way, depending. I'll show you both ways and what the difference is, how the effects on. We've got our tension, nice and light. And as you can see, as it's like as it's tapered outwards. When you get when you push it down, 
you're gonna you're gonna get a slight fault set. As you push it down, you get a deeper fault set. And then what's gonna happen is you're gonna get that counter. Now this is the important part when you get to this counter is is keep that tension light but sturdy because you don't want to go up to the point where it's going to flick and your, all your pins are going to drop and then what you do is you get there you go you should slowly push on that key and pop you're going to get your open well depends if that is in the right order because uh, even though this is a slice as you can see it is a slice of a lock you got to think in your head uh, try and visualize that this is like a five five pin standard euro so like this so we have one two three four five pins so this lock here would be like uh, i class this as a third section so it'd be this section here of lock so you've got a couple of pins ahead of you and then you probably got one behind but that is how a mushroom pin works that way now let's turn it around because you like I say you can have them different ways now generally the only common one way in stock locks in manufactured commercial locks but you never know so we've got it in this way now so as you can see got a little bit of slop in the core but if you had other pins there this core would not be sloppy it'd be very tight like this one when you move this one just a tiny little bit so we'll go for tension so we've got the tension and let's see the interaction that we get. So we get slowly push this down and we're getting counter rotation. And once it gets to that counter, it's gonna go slip in and we're open. That is not the best way to have it, like I say, it's, it's the other way. But I suppose it can happen that way sometimes. All right, let me remove this. And we're gonna attempt, like I say, I did make a little blank to see if we can do a drunken spool. Now a drunken spool is not something you will get in a standard lock. Uh, wrong spring. There we go. Yeah. Yeah, with a drunken spool, show you why they call it a drunken spill. Give me a second. <laughs> Setup's going a bit cockeyed. There we go. Right, so for a drunken spool, what it is, it's a spool that's in two pieces. So, you get your spool. And it's your spool with the top half removed, or bottom half makes no difference as long as it's facing downwards and you need a wafer usually get a wafer in the bottom of the, the lock above the spring and what you'll get is this will move instead of like of a spool when it's in here spools only gonna go like this or just like that but with this one it's not attached to the bottom so it's got all that movement it's got that freedom to move around a lot more so as you can see, we're trapped to get some. We get some. You'll get a massive um, uh, fault set with a drunken spool because they might move, and they can be quite tricky to pick sometimes as well. As you push them down, you're going to get that. You're going to get that counter, but you're also the top of it's going to get stuck on this shear line a little bit. So you have to release a little bit of tension to get it just to shift over, and then you'll get that. And it'll go, it'll, it'll come open like that. But this is what a drunken spool does. Um, you can have it different ways. Generally though, the wafer usually goes on top of the spring. But you can have it as a, you can have it as a, a, a you can have it two way. You can have it as a T pin version. So you can have your T-pin in this way. Push that down. So you've got your T-pin in. I'll just pull this down and lift that up. And then we can put our wafer in the top. So we've got our wafer there. 
and a spool, uh, half a spool there, well, a drunken spool. So as you can see, got all this looseness in the core. It's too small for this though, but it'll do once I get it solid. There we go. So you give it a push down. But the reason I wouldn't do it this way, because it's it's easier to pick your lock, because you can pick this lock twice now, this, this one uh, driver. You can pick it on the shear line with the T-pin, and the wafer will stay in here. Or, if you push it right down to the wafer, there's your other shear line. So you get, on this, two shear lines. You get one on the top of the drunken spool, and one on top of the wafer. So yeah, generally you have your wafer on the spring and the T-pin the upside down. But uh, like I say, it does work that way, but it just doesn't, it's not as efficient that way. Oh, I've lost that, but it's okay. Well, that is uh, what you get with the, um, well, you get with the T-pins and you get with your mushroom spills. Mushroom spills, like I say, they do feel a little bit different. You've just got to be careful once you get to the full shear line because you can drop all your pins with a with a. And st stock locks do come with the uh, mushroom pins. Uh, like I say, I don't think I've ever come across. I've never come across a stock lock with a T pin. It's more of a challenge lock. But I could be completely wrong. And if I am, please put uh, what type of lock it is in the description and let me know. But um. Oh, yeah, that was helpful. That was the last part for for that. What I am going to do next... Sorry, I was picking up something on the floor. What I will do next time is... We'll do it this way. We'll do it upside down. Oh, so upside down for us, but the right way for practically everyone else. Um, but I hope you enjoyed this little mini-series. If you'd like me to do any more on uh, on this, please let me know in the description and I will make another video. But uh, yeah, so uh, thank you very much for watching. Please subscribe and bye. Don't forget to like.